Welcome back. Uh, you're back just in time to see the Golden Kilometer. We're just coming up Vindrag, or the break is at the moment. Chris Yul Jansen, as you can see, is on a, a lonely task at the moment, the Dane, and looking over his shoulder as if to say, <laughs> why didn't anybody join me? Um, well, they're all going to join him in a moment, which means that his attempt to bridge to the breakaway has come to naught, I'm afraid. Still a gap, but nothing serious. There we go. So Etix Giant also joining the fun. And uh, don't be surprised if Giant have some options today. There's uh, plenty of teams that can go very, very quickly when they need. But Nico Arndt has to be the uh, favourite amongst their team. The German doesn't mind a few peaks and tests. And um, uh, maybe even Geschke having a go today as well. Three and a half minutes is the gap. Sort of holding solid for now. And if the rain comes, they'll be a bit regretful that they didn't take the break away a little bit earlier. So, we're just about to be rejoined by our friends from British Eurosport. So, those of you on International, we thank you for your patience. About 1,200 metres remaining until we get to the Golden Kilometre. You all know about it now if you've been watching the Eneco Tour. It's three intermediate sprints crammed into one kilometre. It's usually about 20, between 20 and 25 k's from the line. Today, they've set it 35 kilometres out, so it really did tempt a breakaway. Two men were tempted at the top of the day, Dylan van Baal and Johan Le Bon. That was Jules Jensen. There he is from Tinkoff Saxo, just going back into the pack. It came to naught. I think there may be a sub-attack just going off straight away almost. Um, thought Lotto may well send somebody up the road. Hasn't quite happened, just fighting for position as we stand at 36.4 to go. So, um, it would be nice to go and see the Golden Kilometre, which is about to reveal itself. They're on the approach right now. Here we are. How narrow is that road? <laughs> it's almost rude. Um, I suggest maybe two by two, if they really did go side by side here, um, that would be about it. But uh, they've just done the Citar de Veg. And now they are coming back and into this zone. I think the tick is slightly out. We said that earlier on. In fact, we've been saying it for much of uh, the race, but seriously, I think it's about 1,200 metres out. A lot of grey around, and you can see the retina on the camera struggling to readjust itself automatically as they get inside the darker section. There is brightness around, but there's also some dirty, great big clouds. And if they burst, then all hell's going to break loose. Possibly will be worse tomorrow if that happened on the 10 sections of Pave that we're enjoying to uh, Hufalize. We've got Pave as well on uh, Flanders. Pave and Berg's a mix on both of those days, but uh, some rough stuff trembling through the bars. We look forward to it. Three minutes and 24. It's absolutely rock solid, this break at the moment. Yeah, they're not um, bringing it back too quickly at this moment. Uh, still with the teams of uh, Lotto NL, Jumbo, and Yellow, and the Black Shoulders. Uh, takes a quick step on the right-hand side. You can see uh, uh, Seberg uh, looking after uh, the uh, team of Lotto Sudal. We've got rain. Um, Gentle for now, but believe me, if one of these clouds burst, it's going to be hell. And this is good news for this two, these two up the road. On uh, smaller roads, and particularly when if they do get a little bit of mud wash, which you can when uh, there's a lot of agricultural machinery moving around, they can take the best lines, they can choose every single route through all of these corners, and that dry mud at the side of the road is going to become slushy. 1,000 metres to go until we get to the Golden Kilometre, and it's game on for this pair. See, in Scotland, we wouldn't really call this rain. We'd call it a... Uh, Mizzle. Yeah, a bit of a, a drizzle. <laughs> That's mist and drizzle mixed, apparently. There are lots of other words for rain in Scotland. Uh, That's so not real rain. Some of them are ruder than others. Well, believe me, you're going to get real rain any moment now. And this bodes well for these guys. Three minutes and 21. Will it spur them on, Brian? Yeah, well, uh, they, they still got a good chance. The, the time gap will spur them on more than more than anything. 321 with 35 kilometres to go. Two young uh, guys out there, 23-year-old Devan Barr, 24-year-old uh, uh, Lebon. They're coming up to 500 metres to go for this uh, first of the uh, sprints. And, you know, they're working well together. Two riders that can uh, time trial very well, everything to play for, and still a healthy advantage. Oh, the rain really is coming down. Look at the colour of the road. It's completely gone dark grey. Very, very dark grey, as Batman would say. Uh, 
You've seen the Lego movie, I'm sure. I've got a six-year-old. I can't watch anything else sometimes. Uh, coming up to this little junction, three minutes and 22. Uh, the pace is about them behind. The reason is these guys are getting a bit cagey, Brian, because they've only got 200 metres to go until we get to that first of the intermediate sprints. Who's your money on for this? Yeah, Le Bon. <laughs> You've changed your mind. <laughs> 200 metres to go. They've still got 100 metres to go. Let's I have think a look. they're going to share it. It doesn't look yeah. as if they're really going for it. Uh, both of them, 29 seconds behind for uh, Van Bau, 39 seconds behind for uh, Le Bon in the white. So it does look as if they're, they're sharing them. They think they've got a good chance with 3 minutes and 20 to try and stay away. So they'd rather save a little bit of energy, keep the time gap up and, and try and go pretty much all the way today. Oh, no. It's a picture jam. Uh, there we are. The worst kind of jam. <laughs> Not strawberry. <laughs> No, it's it, 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 it's apricot. Uh, anyway, <laughs> across the line they come right now, hoping that uh, our pictures just stay uh, nailed together for the time being. So there we are. It looks like shared duties. Maybe they'll only contest the last one. They've gone three and two on each of these. Uh, three seconds on the first one and two on the second for Le Bon. Uh, two on the first and three on the second for uh, Van Baal. But yes, uh, an agreement, I think it's fair to say, Brian, that uh, they're not going to damage each other's prospects of getting one and two at the end of the day because that's the big prize after all. Yeah, they want to try and go as long as they can into this stage. Still three minutes and 23 seconds with uh, just under 34 kilometres to go. So Van Barrow now takes seven seconds off his uh, time. So he's now 22 seconds off the overall lead. But they're thinking of going as long as they can into this stage. They know there's a good possibility, so we'll see what happens. Eight seconds, actually. Uh, second on the first one, and then he took the next two sprints. Oh, 21 seconds. Uh, three, three, and two. Uh, so he's now down to 21 seconds in arrears. That's not bad, especially as the gap between they and the peloton, we said rain would cause a few nerves and maybe a couple of shoulders to drop. We'll see. It's got to be all uh, uh, hands to the pumps, to be honest, on a day such as this. And look how nervous they are coming through here. This is not good for a lot of these riders. No, the uh, the peloton will, will be a little bit slow around these uh, curves, especially in the smaller roads. But it's still the teams of uh, Lotto NL Jumbo and Etics Quick Step uh, riding towards the front. You can just see the uh, red and black jerseys of Greg Van Avermaet and uh, oh, 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 Philip no. Gilbert up uh, towards the front as well. Well, uh, a bidon was attempted to be thrown into a field, uh, hit a gate post or a fence post and came straight back in, uh, causing a few moments of worriment. But there's no real drive here. Maybe they just believe that Van Baal and uh, Johan Le Bon, whatever they do today, is not going to be enough when you spin it out through Hufalize and uh, Gerardsbergen, our next two destinations on the roads of the Liege, Bastogne Liege, and, uh, of course, the roads of Flanders. And that gap is uh, reasonably solid at the moment, about 3 minutes and 20 with 32.9 to go. How much can we read into that gap, Brian? When are you going to believe that 3 minutes and 22 is enough for the breakaway to make it? Uh, it's going to be very difficult to, to stay away. Especially this. Uh, very, very difficult to stay away. But they're in with a chance. Just look as if Yul Jensen, outside of our uh, shot, has been brought back. But uh, Philip Gilbert is looking for this one second. Can't help himself. Is that Kirkler is going with him? Jürgen Jensen spreads out the back. It's not Kirkler. Um, I'll, I'll try and get a, uh, an idea on him in a moment. But there goes Philip Gilbert. We said he can go long and said he might be tempted. Is he being now? He's getting cagey. He wants assistance. He is. Uh, Orike Greenedge putting a, a rider right up there. But uh, Greg Van Avermaet also coming across. So wow, this is danger. Greg Van Avermaet and Gilbert going on the attack already. They, they could deliver this. It would be a, a big ask and it will leave them uh, maybe energy depleted for tomorrow. But Gilbert and Van Avermaet, super powerhouse, the pairing of them. And they're going to go over and bridge, I'll be bound, to Van Baal and Le Bon. And they've got a good chance of making it. That was for the uh, the seconds bonuses, by the way. Gilbert wants the intermediate seconds that remain from this golden kilometre. And that's why they're racing. Oh, the rain's got everywhere. It shouldn't, Brian. Well, the courtesy of taking that uh, second time bonus, and I'm not too sure how uh, if he manages to take the third one, but it means that uh, between... Philip Gilbert and Van Avermaet is only a matter of two seconds, but they're not really worried about the one seconds or the two seconds. What they're interested in doing is putting pressure on the peloton. And, uh, you know, that was an opportunity there to put the peloton chasing in a bit of distress. 
and uh, I think a lot of the Raiders in the peloton now will start to waken up. Here we go. Um, you see the clouds just kissing down. Well, right now they've given a dirty great big snog, I'm afraid, a wet one, uh, to the peloton. And uh, some of them are liking it and some are not. So Van Baal, uh, sorry, um, yes, Van Baal and Le Bon up the road. But Van Avermaet and, as you saw, Philippe Gilbert keen to hoover up those spare seconds from that golden kilometre. Three seconds up for grabs, and I think Gilbert took all of them. Uh, we may well get the graphics through, provided we get pictures back, because for the time being, we're uh, showing you for some shots from earlier on today because the link is down, I understand, courtesy of the rain. Disastro. What rain? It's just a drizzle. Stop going on about the rain. Brian, it's chucking it down. We're going to take ourselves a break and hopefully we'll be back with some pictures in a moment. Oh, we've got them. Look at it. Well, uh thoughts of going to a break have now been abandoned because we're seeing and you see some of the impact that the rain is happening on the road and it is causing little V marks as well, little splash ups it's proper, proper stuff, a proper storm now a, a proper shower I should say, I think it may move out but look at the rooster tails being kicked up by the motorcycle here and everybody else and if you can see rain, it really is rain the way that TV pictures reveal themselves uh, pictures per second and the like, it means it's absolutely binning it down, I don't know what that that is in Scottish, but it means uh, it, it's pretty serious as far as a, an Englishman it's is concerned. Down. There, <laughs> there we are. Uh, these guys, a little bit of protection, but not much from uh, the woodland, which they're going into right now. If it starts to gully and rush down this uh, incline, it's going to get very nasty for the chasers. Three minutes, 18, we said rain would help the breakaway, and it is. They're holding station at the moment with 30.9 to go, Brian. So if anybody's tuning in now, this isn't a night race. This is during <laughs> the day <laughs> during the day we have a, oh, oh look at it they're going everywhere the they're testing out the duck stall thought you saw an umbrella there goodness me to go there is a haze because of the bounce up they're getting the worst of it the uh, breakaway is having its fun at the moment believe me in this kind of condition and the peloton is absolutely not but Lars Boom is uh, trying to take advantage here Lars Boom started the day only a matter of uh, seven seconds behind with uh, a view and that uh, white jersey is overall leader so Lars Boom is a rider that can uh, do some damage in these conditions wow this is not uh, here we are visit to the duck store he just wanted to try and steal that guy's <laughs> umbrella <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, we are, we're almost laughing with nerves here because it is a very, very nasty moment uh, for everybody. Forget about wet weather gear. There's too much at stake right now. They're just going to ride this through. Yeah, it's not cold uh, at all. He's just, uh, OK, it's a little bit dangerous in the corners, but uh, Lars yeah, Boom knows yeah, that uh, everybody is uh, riding with caution now. He wants to try and push on. Um, now we're starting to see some other teams getting involved with the race. 30 k's to go. When are they over the finish line again, Brian? With uh, In about 8 k's time, they'll take on the loop for the last time. They will do. It's a 22.4 kilometre lap, so Astana pushing it out. Just van Emden knows this is a danger in the white jersey. He's the overall leader. Uh, you can see Moreno Hoffland right up there. Tim Wellens for uh, Lotto Sudal. So... This has really, the saying, put the cat among the pigeons because a lot of uh, teams want to try and go on the attack. But still, they're not cohesively um, riding at the front of the peloton, which means the two riders in front of uh, Dylan Van Bau and Johan Le Bon are still over three minutes down the road. They are. When is the three minutes going to be believable as a goodly gap to make it home for the break? Well, three minutes, 11 seconds, under 30 kilometres to go. Um, we've seen some attacks, uh, but uh, nobody bringing this gap down. Here we go. Uh, just uh, double-checking on uh, what we've had. Seven seconds for Le Bon, eight seconds bonus for Dylan Van Baal, and Philippe Gilbert picking up three bonus seconds as well after squirrelling uh, out of the pack for the last remaining bonuses. In fact, it was Greg Van Avermaet that nicked one of those as well. So uh, it was uh, at Sharesies <laughs> amongst BMC. The camera looks like it's underwater up there. Such is the rain that is still at altitude. And you can see the gullying. Um, some riders like to go for the uh, side of the road at a moment such as this. But Tosfort Vladeran, is it, uh, is it Ted Tones that's going off here? Uh, having a look, and um, uh, but no chance of that, especially on the incline, because the water is starting to collect and gully just a little bit. 
a lot of riders just deciding that uh, what well, would like to be doing exactly this, but they, they, some of them are on nursing duties. Back out from under the cover of the trees and back into the fire department. Looks like it's hosing everybody down at the moment. It's warm, but it's very wet. Yeah, that's the thing. You can just still see people in T-shirts and shorts that say the roads, um, but still no real chase. One of the riders uh, trying to get uh, a bottle there, he got it the second time for uh, Top Sport Vlandering, but still no major chase at the front of the peloton as we can see the uh, team in yellow and the pressure is on them. They've got first and second, but it's Nicky Terstra of uh, Etix Quickstep at the front of the peloton with some of the other yellow jerseys from uh, Lotto NL Jumbo in attendance. Looking at the side of the road here, and it's uh, really starting to puddle. If this rain uh, cloud hangs around, this could get actually rather nasty indeed. And they're starting to uh, open their hands and, uh, uh, and beckon each other. They want uh, help. They want other teams to engage in the drive. Anyone who finds themselves on the front doesn't like it. They're taking a big hit from the rain. This is a day of drama. But the thing is, uh, Etix Quickstep have been here before uh, in the Tour of Britain last year when a uh, break went down the road with Van Baal and it, uh, they gave him too much time in the end. Van Baal uh, took the overall victory and uh, Mikhail Kwiatkowski had to settle for second place in the Tour of Britain. You know, it slipped out their grasp. So, yeah, there's a good opportunity now for these two riders to try and stay away. Three minutes and ten seconds, 28 kilometres to go, but still no real chase at the front of the peloton. So we're going to see some of the teams have to take this on, and it does look as if it's BMC that's uh, taking this because the rider in second place is actually Moreno Hoffland, and I don't think he'll be doing too much work. Three minutes and six, 28.3 to go. Next time they cross the line in six kilometres time, or thereabouts, they'll hear the bell and it'll be welcome to the men in the breakaway. They will then still have five climbs to deal with. And indeed, the then the final run in. I wonder if they'll get to a cat and mouse situation or whether these guys who now look like they've suddenly realised what the danger is will in fact close the gap. Three minutes and two. Now, the th rule of thumb is a minute per 10 kilometres. As you can see, that's precisely what they've got at the moment, thereabouts. 28 k's to go. It could get close, this. I think it could get uh, very close. Uh, the top spot of Landeran uh, rider is just about to be swept up by the uh, peloton led by BMC, but there's a lot of riders not really enjoying themselves, but this is a great opportunity to try and split things up. You can see the rider in red, uh, Tease Benut, just talking on his radio. Um, the thing is, Lotto and El Yumbo really have to drive this along because they could be losing first and second. But uh, you can just see Hofland looking behind the uh, race leader in the white jersey just out to the, the uh, left-hand side. There's a lot of gaps starting to appear in this peloton. Pure and simple, you know, the elastic band effect is coming into play on these corners. Just watch the breakaway going through the corners. This is a, a real hamper, you see? It squeezes out and essentially becomes a long, long line. You really can't go through even side by side. So uh, it's single file through as they come up Windrak again. This, uh, they still have uh, plenty to do today. That's, uh, I think that's Windrak for our breakaway, by the way, not for the men who are chasing them down. They're, they're still over there in three minutes' time. Here they are. So they come up Windrak. A, uh, it, there's a Primus mark at this point as well, as you saw. 700 metres, 4.5 percent. But it's when we have a turn that these guys are able to take it nice and carefully. These guys can't. They have to essentially do a bit of a gentleman's excuse me after you, after you. And they go through single filey. You'll see that. Look at it. It's not a determined chase just yet. And we now have 20, nearly 26. They found four seconds in 2K. So they've got to find a different pace. The question is, will they be allowed to? And this motorcycle is offering up a little bit of resistance, a wind resistance for them. Uh, being called away, I'll be bound. The pace that they're going at the moment is, um, to me, it, it says nervous. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit harder in the peloton now because it's stretched out. And always in these conditions, when the uh, rain is coming down and the stray in the front of the wheel, uh, you tend to leave uh, a, a bigger gap between the rider in front of you. Uh, because you want to try and see. It's like uh, you know driving in the car without any uh, windscreen wipers. It's You want to move to the left, to the right, 
Uh, sometimes when you're sitting too close to the wheel, you can't uh, see anything because you can see a lot of the riders have taken off their uh, glasses. And when this happens in the rain, it's a lot harder uh, when the pressure is on and uh, a lot of riders start to get tired. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, many riders are starting to get dropped now. Uh, lots of looking back. Everyone's had a game plan at the top of the day and that's having to be torn up right now with uh, 2 minutes and 52 to the breakaway and 25 kilometres to go. I'm beginning to half believe that the breakaway, because of the rain, might make it. We said if rain came in, it would favour those men up the road, and it's certainly doing so at the moment. There's not much road space to play with, and to be honest, the uh, uh, those on the motorcycle handing out the time gaps by a visual on the chalkboard, I imagine it's just being uh, uh, doused at the moment. I'm not sure how much they can read. So two motorcycles uh, assisting the chase down. To my mind, they should get out of there, frankly. Uh, just a little bit of distance. He has got a, a zoom lens, which he can use. 25.1 kilometres to go then. Uh, so about less than three now until they get to the bell and the line. And in fact, you can hear the bell, man. We've got a, a mic at the line here. <laughs> you can hear him practising just to make sure that the clapper was in place. So they're starting to wrestle for it. They want road space right now at a point where they can actually gain some positions. And then when they get a bit of pace and the road turns again and we get to those corners, this is where you reassemble your fighting force. On a the climb. thing is, BMC at the front. You see Andrew Greipo on the left-hand side up towards the front as well. These riders, these teams, if they do not want to give um, Van Bauw and Le Bon the opportunity of taking that uh, leader's jersey because Van Bau is riding very well at the moment. He's just out of the Tour de France, so will have strong legs. They have to commit themselves that they, when we cross the line, there will be 22.4 kilometres to go to the finish. We have got one rider from BMC. It's ridden on the front. You can just see the gap starting to appear. That's courtesy of the weather. Lars Bom is just sitting there for a stand-up. But is there a team with numbers going to commit themselves on this last lap? Or are the two riders in front? Very good time trial as Van Bauer and Le Bon going to stay away. It's a big question and it's a big day for the pair up front. The weather has blessed them. They've had that fortune. The, the other is the pack behind them are having grave difficulty negotiating the corners. And every time they come to one, they have a concertina compression and then a stretch out. Some wobbly moments for some of these guys. The least comfortable in these conditions are already finding themselves away from what is beginning to form as a group of about 20 riders. As you can see right now, these are the committed. Yeah, if you're, um, you're tired in these conditions when somebody's riding hard on the front and you go through these uh, corners, gaps starting to appear and, you know, the elastic band effect, it starts to snap. You can just see Marshall Guyon coming up there, giving his uh, rider uh, food. He now has to believe that there's a good possibility here. We're coming up to the bell and the last lap. So Dylan Van Bauer and um, Johan Le Bon, the two youngsters, are giving this uh, peloton a run for the money. They certainly are. Two minutes and 36 with 23.7 Ks to go now. The rain is uh, punishingly hanging around. And just look at it gullying on the road here. You can see the riders actually cutting through this. I think you need a dreadnought at the end of today if you're going to make it to the line. In fact, nobody wants to go on the inside of the road. You can see it's uh, even deeper there. And just look at the spray. It's almost hanging around like a mist cloud as well. 23.4 to go. The bell for these boys is going to be a sweet sound indeed. Yeah, it's in uh, this case with only one BMC rider at the front of the peloton. How much time are these two going to hang on with? They started the day. Van Bauer in the green at uh, 29 seconds. He's taken eight seconds off that, courtesy of the uh, golden kilometre. 21 seconds down. Le Bon, 39 seconds at the start of the day. Now cut it to 32, courtesy of his seconds at the golden kilometre. So they're in with a shout. They are more than in with a shout. The clock will roll here, but it's the bell that they'll like the sound of. They now know they have five inclines to take, and they want the rain to hang around. Yeah, and I think it will all the way to the uh, finish now. It's Who's going to put the numbers at the front of the peloton to bring it back? It does look as if uh, Lotto NL Jumbo, it's, it should be down to them, but just look at the size of the peloton now. They've already ridden at the front, they've probably lost some riders. There'll be some riders, you know, afraid of uh, taking any risks. And, uh, you know, the peloton, since this uh, rain came on, is blown apart. Absolutely blown apart, and uh, I'm not talking about Napoleon, although he did hang around in this part of the world. Uh, two minutes and 36. It's absolutely solid with 22.6 to go. There is still that one rider from BMC. Now 
Uh, Moreno Hoffland has got uh, another rider in front of him. It looks like uh, Martin Wine is uh, up now helping for uh, Lotto NL Jumbo. Lusenko is up there. Quinziato Greipo is up there in the uh, red jersey. The race leader, Jus van Emden, is uh, also up in this uh, front group. But what team have got the numbers to commit? Because they have to commit. They cannot just leave it to this single rider from BMC. Well, it's, uh, it's actually expanding the gap at the moment. And that's because of the weather. And, of course, I, I think these guys are trying to find out what what remnant they can pull out of today 22.2 remaining for the men up the road 2 minutes and 36 when these guys finally cross the line and we get a definitive gap then we'll take ourselves a commercial break and then we'll be back to see whether the breakaway can actually make it home it's the sky that broke up today and that I think has been a surprise to many they saw 25% as a possibility of rain but uh, we were told by the organisers no, that means that 25% of the course will be wet and it's been the last 25% today and that has been quite amazing for the men up the road it certainly has, uh, we've got a, a general regroupment of the uh, peloton as they come in from the drizzle uh, to the uh, start the finish line and the gap is still over two minutes. It is, they can hear the bell, 50 metres to go. It's uh, not quite two and a half minutes though, is it? It's down to two minutes and 10. So um, the ticker just slightly out, not surprised. I'm sure some of the relays have, uh, have been knocked out. Is it enough? It, by the rule of thumb, it's just enough, but they've really still got to form themselves into a proper attack. If this is all they've got, then the breakaway can make it. Somebody's got to put something more into the drive to catch the two men up the road, who we remind you, a decent time trialist, Dylan Van Baal and Jorn Lebon. Will they get there? Welcome back. The chase is on, but how much fortitude have they got on a day like this? It appears to be a washout. However, it seems they've got a chance, the pursuers, of catching the breakaway. The rain has been a major factor in this chase down. It's hampered them. There's been a big coming together, however, on the big highway here, where some of those out on the country roads got disengaged. They've refound themselves. The bell's still tolling on some of those that did not. They're way down the order. So we're on our final loop today in uh, 22.4 kilometres for these guys who are just crossing the line now. Their day will be done. But there's a lot of work still to be done, particularly about the chases. Alarm bells have been going off. Dylan Van Baal and Johan Lebon are up the road and they're having some fun, courtesy of the weather. Big factor and a big question, Brian, are they going to make it? I think it's still touch and go. Um, it really depends. Now we're starting to see Andre Greipel coming up, and we've seen him do this before. He wants to try and help out a little bit of more panic in the peloton. What an effort that was from the single, I think it was the uh, league of uh, BMC, what an effort he put in over the last five, six kilometres. Now we see a little bit more commitment from some of the other teams. Andre Greipel has decided, well, it's not going to be his day, but he's going to help out, as suspected. They've got Thijs Benutz and uh, Tim Wellens. Tim Wellens won last year, but uh, BMC have put numbers on the front. You've also got uh, Lotto NL Jumbo willing to help out a little bit. Still doable to bring these two riders back, but what a magnificent stage this is turning out to be. Welcome back, British viewers. Uh, it is a nightmare for the chase, but they're engaging it, and it's just starting to ebb a little bit, at least in some of the uh, uh, covered areas, as you can see. Uh, more rain is predicted, however. It hasn't stopped just yet, and apparently we're going to get a heavier shower coming through in about five minutes' time. All this is conspiring to help the breakaway. These guys are on the Kolenberg, as you can see. In fact, I think it's the breakaway that's on the Kolenberg right now, which tells me that they've got less than 20 to go. Andre Greipel realises the danger. He's trying to help out the rest of his Lotto Sudal teammates. Hayes Banut is Lotto Sudal's favoured man for the day, uh, but Greipel sacrificing himself in the big push to try and catch the breakaway. Dylan Van Baal and Johan de Laban are having a great deal of fun on a very wet day. And here it comes right now. They said five minutes, but it's bouncing off the road, as you can see. Stair rods, I think it's fair to say. Cats and dogs lying absolutely everywhere. This is a nightmare for the chase and heaven in a very wet <laughs> way for the breakaway. Will they make it, Brian? 
I'm not too sure they will now because uh, there's a few teams now really committed. It was a big effort there by uh, Vlegan of the BMC team, yet some riders still coming in seven minutes down. We actually hit this uh, finishing circuit of 22.4 kilometres pretty much all together. So it just goes to show you what damage was done over when the rain came on and gaps starting to appear. You can just see a Van Baal and Le Bon starting to sway a little. They're starting to feel tired, but they still have to believe they can hold off the peloton. Uh, no time gap posted for the time being because the clock's out. Uh, it was out when they hit the line. It said 2 minutes and 38. I uh, wondered why there hadn't been much change. We said it was solid. It wasn't. It had come back down to 2 minutes and 10. I suggest it's possibly under the 2-minute mark right now. Uh, we're playing guesswork, and we'll just have to... Uh, wait until they come within sight. Even then, these guys have got a chance because they're decent time trials, the pair of them. The thing is, it's still a health enough at the advantage. Uh, JMP Drucker now comes to the, the uh, front. He's been sprinting well, but he has to be used up now. So again, a bit of a panic attack. BMC putting riders towards the front. So is uh, Andrew Greipel for Lotto Sudal. Lotto Sudal have got Tim Wellens and uh, Taze Benutz. Tim Wellens right up there on Andrew Greipel's uh, wheel in fourth place, but it's uh, Jempi Drucker and uh, Daniel Weiss, the um, Swiss champion on the front of the peloton. They come onto this main oh, road, so puddles. this gap is coming down, but uh, just watch out for the uh, team cars behind, because the team cars will come out that gap when it comes down to uh, one minute. There we are. That's uh, going to be the only tell, I'm afraid. It's not a comfortable day for these guys, and uh, they're just putting in the energy, as you can Tom see. Tom Bonin on the right-hand side. Yeah, everyone wants a bit of fun today. Why not Tom Bonin today if these guys don't make it? Team cars, are they being called out? No, well, that's the uh, car that sits at the front of the peloton, so one of the control cars, so that does mean the gap is inside two minutes now. I would say the gap now is uh, about one minute and 30 seconds, so they're pulling out some of the cars. Uh, one of the referees' cars is now coming out. Last Peter Nordauk for uh, Team Sky moving up towards the front. So this gap is coming down, but we can still see the team cars are just pulled over at, uh, now. So this gap is down to just over one minute. I one think. minute 30 we're hearing uh, from race control, but I think it's a little bit less than that. Shimano neutral service goes through right now. Uh, these guys almost being hampered by the splash. Watch this. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you wondering how wet it is, Brian? Uh, Brian described this as not much rain at all in Scottish fashion. Uh, right now, I think we're building a new lock. It's coming down from the side, not straight down. <laughs> but um, the team cars have been pulled out, which means that the gap is down to just about one minute now. So I believe that uh, it could be all over for these two riders. But what a magnificent display they are put on. So uh, with the team cars now coming up, this gap is coming down quickly. 16.3. Uh, now, I suspect uh, the question is going to be whether they can hold on, not only out in front, but whether they can finish as part of the front group here and hold on, essentially, to the seconds bonus that they have taken. Here we go. It, it, it requires a big effort. It requires a big push, and Sky are happy uh, to do exactly that. And why not call on uh, the likes of Peter Nordhaug or, indeed, anyone else for, who's used to these kind of conditions? Well, he's trying to go from the front uh, yet again. Lars Bohm was the uh, rider to try to go with him, but still, Andrew Greipel is in there. Still a lot of riders left in this race. We come over the top of this climb. This gap is still over one minute. It um, does look as if the referees put, took the uh, team cars out a little bit prematurely, but they know it's coming down. Um, but uh, again, the, uh, the uh, Katusha rider not wanting to push on, but what an, an effort uh, Andrew Greipel is doing in the red jersey. Yeah, yep, he's doing a fantastic job. He's, he's quite happy to be a team player when, uh, when required. And look how vertical these guys want to keep the bicycles coming into the, uh, uh, into the corners here, which are very, very wet. Spell out to the other side, not a happy place to be. A lot of wobbling going on, let's put it that way. 15.7 kilometres to go, still two brave souls up the road. And how narrow is this? Uh, minute and 20, we've uh, finally got a clock back in. They called out the cars early for safety reasons because they didn't want to start wrestling uh, with the puddles, presumably, uh, trying to get clear later on. So they are have now just taken on the Sittardweg. That was 800 metres at 4%. They've got two more climbs to deal with, and then they can start thinking about the end of the day. Minute and 19 seconds. It's still not certain that these guys are going to get caught. A big attack now by Lars Boom. That was Quincy Atto at the front, but uh, Lars Boom really wants to take this uh, leader's white jersey. He's looked around, saw that uh, Lotto NL Yumbo are a bit of a disarray. Nobody really wanted to take this on, but this gap coming down, 119 or 120 now 
15 kilometres to go, but it's Lars Bohm trying to do something. But uh, Quincy Atto is sharply up to his backfield. Well, as they start to wrestle here, and, and in fact, as this has thinned out, they've got more chance of delivering, and that's what we're seeing right now. Uh, Nizzolo is also here, and Fabio Fellin, uh, the Italians from Trek Factory Racing. So the white shoulders are represented. 122, it says. Every single attack that we seem to have here is an attempt to draw out some assistance and firepower, and Bohm's elbows going out like a dodgy disco dancer at the moment. He wants some kind of assistance, and he's not getting it. His, his cheeks billow as he blows out as it, on a, an invisible trumpet. His uh, disdain for the day, and in fact, uh, the efforts of those around him. But it's starting to roll now. More and more are fancying bridging this gap, or at least attempting to. What a day we have here, Brian. It's uh, been absolutely enthralling. The rain has played its part, and this game is not over yet by a long way. No, it's not. They're still hanging in there with uh, 1 minute 20. This uh, gap is a problem here. It looks like for Lars Boom, it can only be Lars Boom uh, has a, a rear wheel puncture, or is it... Try to look to see who it is. Well, it's De Vries. De Vries, and, uh, Lawrence De Vries. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, Luchenko, I think, who would have been a big call Luchenko, for today. yes. Yeah, uh, Luchenko it is. My goodness, that's not a great moment at all. And Luchenko would have been a uh, one of the chosen ones. Uh, Bohm, of course, uh, pushed on a, a few moments ago. Minute and 17, if we can trust that clock, it still looks reasonable. It's a possibility, although a narrowing one for the breakaway. It certainly is. It's uh, Quincy Atto still at front for uh, BMC. Uh, Tim Wellens up there for Lotto Sudal. In the reds, Moreno Hoffland in the yellow there for uh, Lotto NL Yombo is doing a very good job. Magnus Court Nielsen over on the left hand side for uh, Orica Green Edge. Lars Bohm is still up there. Marco Marcato in the uh, blue <laughs> for Wanty Group Gobel. And into the sunshine come the breakaway. Very wet roads remain, as you can see. There's a rainbow somewhere with this rain and this sun. Well, who's going to get the pot of gold? Will it be one of these two? Minute and 15, 14 Ks to go. They've got a fantastic chance today. Wow, is it coming to them, Brian? A minute and 15 normally wouldn't be enough with 13.9 kilometres, but this is not a normal day. It's a wet day, and these two guys are time trialists. They can do this. They can. I still think it's going to be very difficult. Um, there's a lot of uh, riders behind still have to commit themselves. Once we get onto this main road, you see Andy Greipel's there. Quincy Atto's looking behind. What do we do? Is he going to get any cooperation from anybody else? How many other riders are there from one team? Etics Quickstep are nowhere to be seen apart from Nicky Terpstra now. Well, oh, they're all looking at each other. Who wants to do this? Anybody? Anybody fancy doing this? <laughs> the answer for the time being is no. That's the thing, is how many teammates are there for BMC? They've already used up some of their riders. Quincy Atto can chop off at least 20, 30 sec seconds on his own, so he's just waiting for the call. What's happening? The trouble is, the, the uh, cars are behind. The, they might be experiencing some of the uh, problems that uh, we've experienced here in the commentary box with the, uh, the television screens. They will not know what's happening. It's very difficult for the motorbikes to say how many riders are there, who's actually in there. So the sports directors will probably not know what's happening. The only people who know what's happening are the riders themselves, and they're looking around. And you can just see the size of the group now. It's only about 30, 40 riders. Nobody in numbers, so with uh, no team wanting to really commit, you can just see Philip Gilbert saying, come on, get together, we can help each other. And it does look as if BMC do not have enough numbers to do it themselves. There we are. Everyone is uh, kind of talking to each other. A little stroke on the back there from Nordhaug, and Phil Gilbert picks up the pace again. Minute seven, 12.8 to go. It could come right down to the wire. Bonus seconds could be a big factor today at the line. 10, 6 and 4, Brian. It could be, but uh, for uh, Jus van Emden to keep that jersey, he has to bring this back another 40-odd seconds because uh, Van Baal started the day 29 seconds down. He's taken already 8 seconds, 21 seconds off that overall lead. I've not really seen where the white jersey is, if he is, in fact, in this group. But I know that Wilco Kelderman is, but uh, Andrew Greipel still in this front group, but still oh, no cohesion. Look at them wavering all over the road. They don't want to help each other. And uh, to be honest, they could be staring at each other into the abyss right now. Big pick up from those behind us for just tempo off the nose. The thing is, nobody's taking control of the race. BMC look to be the only team that want to try and do something. But Jus van Emden is there in the white jersey. They're just sitting back if uh, Lotto NL Jumbo want to win the stage. Because I believe that if Lotto NL Jumbo puts a couple of riders on the front to help out this chase. They've got Moreno Hoffland in here to win the stage and they can keep a hold of that white jersey. 
Well, why aren't they doing it? Because you're not on the blower, Brian. That's why a minute and six, 11.7 Ks. If that minute holds with eight Ks to go, I think the breakaway have got a great chance. Let's see if they make it to that point, shall we? Uh, they're dispensing with uh, uh, the bid-ons. They've dispensed with the glasses long ago. Rain like bullets on the eyeballs. They don't mind that. They certainly won't as well because it'll be tears of joy at the end of this day if they get home. Yeah, there's only two climbs to go and it's how much time will they lose and they take two climbs. It does look as if if they do stay away, uh, obviously there's 10, 6 and 4, but you can just see uh, Van oh, Baal oh, that's why. just kicking back that ever so slightly now. That is why Van Baal took that very easy. There's the duck stall that's been visited earlier on today as well, and I'll be bound when the uh, pack come through there, they're going to know all about it. He just eases back on. That was, a, that was a safety issue. Just keep distance between each other. Yeah, he knew he was going in, and uh, obviously... Different people are, are confident with uh, different um, capabilities and their tyres as well. So it did look as if Cannondale Ryder at the back there, Van Bell, just wanted to take it a little bit more easier. Well, a squeaky duck moment, I think, and there'll be a few more before the end of this one. So back together, a minute and six, 10.6 to go. Um, are you believing in them yet, Brian? It's very possible. There's uh, real no chase that, uh, behind. Now we see Jan Bakelands for AG2R come towards the front. It really depends on these guys now. If they, they commit themselves, they help each other, then they'll bring these two riders back. If they don't and start looking around, then Van Baal could be the uh, new race leader. But who is going to win the stage? That's the question. Big question. 10.2 Ks to go. Uh, two more days of classics racing to come, don't forget. Lie the roads of the Liege, Baston Liege tomorrow. Here's your duck stall. <laughs> I'd have moved those ducks back a bit, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> knowing what was coming. Um, it'll ease off. There's no more real commitment behind these guys, I'm afraid. From this 35, 36 uh, rider group that we've got here right now, they can't quite decide. Um, I, I'm looking at the time. It says a minute and eight, 9.8 kilometres to go. And I don't see a great drive to catch this pair up the road. Maybe they think they can get them on other days. The team cars are back in there, mm, Carlton. They, they now believe. So the uh, France the Jew car and Cannondale car believe. You can just see the gap visually now. But the riders that were towards the front of the peloton weren't riders, weren't the domestics. It was, in fact, the, the leaders of the team. Uh, we can see as this uh, Wallis of uh, Top Spot Vlanderen and uh, Andrew Greipel prizing themselves off the front of the bunch. Well, Greipel, why not uh, on a day like today? He, he's probably got uh, team dispensation to just have a pop. Kirk Allaire trying to pick it up as well. He could be, a, if you get a decent finishing position today, uh, narrow the gap, you're going to give yourself a good chance of a decent placement into Hufalisi and to Gerardsbergen the next couple of days. There we go. 9.1 Ks remaining. One minute and nine. The break can make this, but will they? Desperate attempt by Andre Greipel to get back in here. Now, they get uh, the choice of the crown of the road. It's not going to be something on offer to those behind. Please don't let that car that just accelerated rapidly toward them to get over that last little bump to uh, get erroneously engaged in proceedings. Let's just hope not. It's uh, lights flaring out. It really is a dance for you right now. Uh, but to what tune it's being set by these guys. What a tempo. We know that they can make it 8.6. And uh, now they've got one more climb to take. That's up to Vindrak for the last time of asking. This is 350 metres at 8%. They've dealt with it, Brian. Yeah, it looks uh, very much uh, doable now. Van Baal was given an opportunity in the Tour of Britain last year, took the rewards. The others miscalculated. I do think because of the rain, it really helped these two riders. It does look as if now they'll hang on to take first and second in the stage. There we go. Uh, what's going to happen behind? This could be damage limitation. Andre Greipel is really powering into these uh, little bergs, and it's good to see him as well just going for it. I think this is to hell with it. I'm just going to do my own thing. It looks like that. Uh, he's trying to keep it going, but uh, he's drifting off the front of the peloton. Uh, Magnus Court Nielsen was the first rider around that corner, but still no reaction. A little bit surprised here with PMC. Greg Van Avermaet and uh, Philip, G Philip Gilbert. I know there's still a couple of days to go, but uh, when you get a sprinter uh, di disappearing up the roads, it means that there's no real chase in the peloton. Yeah, absolutely, especially on a distance such as this. 180 kilometres, so 179.6 today. 208.6. Maybe some of the guys here are thinking, you know what, we can take back uh, the time that we lose today 
courtesy of the fact that they're 29 and 39 down, at least at the top of the day. Factor in the bonuses, though, and uh, the big dangling bonus of 10 and 6 seconds for first and second across the line. It suits the breakaway. 7.7 .7 kilometres to go, and just under a minute is what they've got right now. But you know who the big losers are, uh, Karen? It's the team in the yellow. Kelderman's just coming across the gap now, but... Kelderman's there, I think the, the uh, Jus van Emden and uh, one other teammate is there. If they committed themselves a little bit earlier, then they could have hold on to this um, uh, white jersey, but it looks as if it's slipping out their hands now. Looks as if it is, and Andre Greipel is leading the charge, and Kelderman alive to the danger. Tim oh, Wellens is also there, so wow. this is what they're trying to do. So Greipel went for it, Tim Wellens has gone with them. Does look as if it's, that's Predler for a uh, giant Alpesin behind. Bacalan's trying to come across. BMC start to see the danger, but what an effort Andy Greipel put in today. Yeah, fabulous effort indeed. So, can uh, Lotto Sodell deliver or is it all too late? Tim Wellens is there. He takes over right now. The uh, uh, camera bike just hits one of those sleeping policemen, those uh, little traffic calming devices. 7.3 to go, 53 seconds. It's going to be a race a very, very quick one. Um, how depleted are the resources of our breakaway, having been a two-man act for most of, the, most of the day? The thing is, they have ridden uh, together. Uh, they've ridden conservatively. We can see it in the sprints. They never sprinted each other. They saved a little bit of energy, and I believe that saving of this little bit of energy is going to um, help them to uh, first and second in the stage. Whether Van Baal, whether it's Le Bon, I don't think they'll start messing around because uh, both of them will be moving up in the general classification as well. Um, just off the uh, the drive, as you saw there, because they were coming into a wet corner, and we remind you that there's still plenty more of those to come. The rain has stopped, so it's now playing back into the hands of the chasers, being led at the moment by Andre Greipel. But this is going to be a danger zone for them. Look at the debris, look at the dirt, look at the nastiness. You've just got to hope that these guys don't get themselves any kind of technical at this moment. They've got 44 seconds, six and a half kilometres to go. Are the break going to make it? It does look as if they are, if that time gap is uh, ride 43 seconds because it's only two riders, Andy Greipel has put in a hard effort already, Tim Wellens at the front but I can't understand, Kelderman is there Kelderman should be helping, should be riding and uh, okay, Magnus Court Nelson can afford to you know, sit back, he's not up there in overall but this is a great opportunity now for Wilco Kelderman at the back to uh, move up in the, oh, he's already second in general classification, but try and take something from today because I think that um, Lotto NL Yumbo, after a fantastic stage yesterday, it's all drifting away from him. See Tim Wellen said, come on, and they're shaking their head, no. Keldman, get to the front, help them out and uh, try and win this race overall. Andre Greipel on the radio and he's not tuning into a jazz programme, I can tell you that much. 40 seconds to go. Uh, this is heavy rock at the moment and there's, a, there's plenty of those on the ground. Just look at the water wash that we were telling you about. A lot of debris being brought out. It's going to be between these pair by the looks of things. 39 seconds with 5.7. They mustn't come off the gas too much though, Brian. They can't come off the gas at all if uh, all of the five riders behind help each other. And it looks as if they're not. The giant uh, Alpecin rider doesn't want to help. And just see Tim Wellens uh, sitting back. Kelderman just sitting on the back. Look, Kelderman's sitting on the back because they've got the race lead, but the race lead is disappearing out their hands down the road. So if I was Kelderman, I would be riding in this front group. Well, uh, they're coming through that dodgy section right now. This is Van Baal, who just takes up time trialling duties out at the front, as you can see. Uh, Johan Le Bon as well. We remind you that their deficits yesterday were 39 and 29 seconds, respectively. Uh, Van Baal, the better placed of the pair of them. They're going to find bonuses. They found them along the way today on the Golden Kilometre. And in fact, now they've got a 38 second gap and there's 10 and 6 seconds available, first and second across the line as well. 4.9 kilometres to go, 38 seconds. I don't trust that clock, to be honest. It's been solid for a bit too long. 39, it's going back, it's lengthening. I saw Andre Greipel shake his head. And I think that was, uh, he, he was listening in the radio as well because it was, uh, they were screaming in his ear. He's done his job, essentially, but they were getting no help behind. He's done a super job. Tim Wellens now comes to the front. The question for me is um, the rider at the back, Wilco Kelderman, should be riding with this group. Normally, when you get the, the race lead, you don't help out. Uh, you know, you can sit on, but 250 metres over the top of the climb, they should have 
you know, 30 seconds at least, which I think is going to be enough to keep them away for the finish. They've dealt with the climb, actually. This Primus coming on a, a little flatter section, and they're still sharing duties out of the saddle. They just want to take on this little tiny ramp, nothing too serious. Then four kilometres from home, 36 seconds. What's the gap going to be ultimately, though? That is going to prove crucial. And then it's a question of just holding on to that if these two do bring this home. Uh, it's tumbling down now, 32 seconds. You can't take anything for granted, not yet. Yeah, it's always going to come down. Kelderman decides he comes to the front now, but uh, Tim Whelan's still in there, Griper. What? I can't, can't, you know, I don't think he thought he would be here at the end of the day, but he's done a, a fantastic effort for his team. Uh, Magnus Court Nelson just sitting in there. I still don't know who the uh, giant Alpecin rider is, but uh, Kelderman decides very late. Now he has to get involved. If he got involved a little bit earlier, he could be uh, battling out for the win. 25 seconds now. It really is tumbling. 3.3 uh, kilometres to go. I'm hoping it's not going to be heartbreak for these guys and that the motorcycle just gets out of there, frankly. Um, it's uh, it's difficult sometimes for a motorcycle to take uh, the traffic calming. They, hit, they get it hit harder than the riders but right now hitting it hard is Andre Greipel and Kelderman doesn't I don't know I, if I'm Kelderman not... commits he will take the leader's jersey and save the day for Lotto NL Yumbo if he commits 100% now well uh, these guys have, have been near to 100% most of the day uh, Van Baal sends the arm out you can see the fatigue that's coming in they're under pressure the team are informing them what the gap is three kilometers to go 22 seconds can they still make it I still think they can uh, 21 seconds now three kilometers you can just see them in the distance uh, if all these five riders behind commit themselves then it's uh, going to be a sprint finish but I still think they'll look at each other it's down to Greipel how much has Greipel got left in the tank because he's the only one that is uh, looking as if he is the instigator of bringing these guys back 19 seconds now and the bond takes a big look and he sees on the curve of the road that these are guys are there 2.8 kilometers to go I think they're possibly going to get caught uh, are they going to get caught though it's going to be a big ask as they come down to this little dip it doesn't look like 19 seconds to me we'll time it for you in a few moments time my goodness uh, 2.7 kilometers to go they done enough these guys can we said we've told you a number of times time trial though they've got to do an absolute belter now with 2.6 to go well it's still hanging in there uh, the giant Alpecin rider is uh, your Predler so Predler is the uh, rider behind like I said before if they all commit they can bring these riders back it's still hanging on still believable so Greipel, Wellens, uh, Kelderman, Predler and Magnus Court Nelson have got a slender advantage to shut down and we move back to what's left of the peloton BMC have really missed out today. They're all rushing into this, uh, rushing into the void. 2.3 kilometres, and Le Bon's uh, stretched his legs. Well, it's proper racing from Le Bon right now. He suddenly realised, just look how nervous he is. Get out of my way, says the cameraman. Of course, Ale, Ale, and do get lost, for goodness sake. We want the pictures, but we don't want it to uh, hamper the race. Ale, Ale screams at the camera bike, and he finally listens and gets out of there. He's been too close for too long, bro. The thing is, Le Bon knows that uh, Van Baar is uh, not confident in the corners so he's trying to use that to his advantage so he's uh, trying to go for the win here by using the corners to his advantage uh, Van Baal still got an opportunity to come back but Kelderman starting to ride but is it a little too late now well he's nervous as well 1.6 kilometers to go they're just out of sight in this village uh, got to pick up the pace right now this camera really does need to be told to get some distance between these guys and there come the chasers 1400 meters to go it's possibly going to be heartbreak for Van Baal but it looks like Johan Le Bon may well just hang on let's see what's uh, left behind can Andre Greipel uh, find himself something on this day I think he's possibly thinking yes he can 1200 meters to go the Flam Rouge beckons well, Jörg Piedler has now dropped, so uh, Tim Wellens puts a really big turn in now. Van Bau is almost coming back to Le Bon. I still don't think it's enough for the, the riders behind. I think one kilometre to go, Le Van Bau is coming back. Who is going to win still in the balance? Still very much in the balance. What a day we've had today. It's been a treat for you guys at home, I'm sure. Uh, you tune in on stage five of the Enico and you don't think you're going to see much drama. Well, we've had plenty of it today. A cloud burst and it uh, cast many an ambition asunder. We've got two time trialists at the moment against classics and sprinters, boys behind. Can they deliver it? Here comes Van Bau trying to get back on the win. 
wheel of Le Bon. It's going absolutely down to the wire, this. Yeah, Neil Baiting stuff and Andy Gray is actually burying himself for Tim Wellens. Kelderman is there, Magnus Gordon Nelson, but it looks as if the stage is between Van Baal and Le Bon. Well, they, they, were, they had to be very careful through the corners. They've taken just about the last one right now. They disappear out of view. There is Le Bon. There is Van Baal. They've been out there for much of the day. And the chasers, I don't think, are going to catch them. 150 metres to go. What a fantastic stage this has been. Absolute brilliant stuff. Both for Le Bon, who says, my stage, and Van Baal, who says, thank you very much. Both of them can take a bow. Absolutely superb stuff. And what's left for everybody else? A time gap, some reverence and maybe a story of what might have been. What a day. What a day. And uh, Magnus Gordon Nelson comes up and takes the uh, third place there. Uh, looks as if um, Thijs Benut uh, with uh, Philip Gilbert battling out. So a bunch sprint taken by Thijs Benut. Wow, 10, 6 and 4 seconds. 10 and 6 going to Le Bon and Dinan Van Baal. They did a joyous run today. And there may even be a gap between them of a second. I wouldn't be surprised. What a result for Johan Le Bon and Dylan Van Baal. The pair of them, youngsters. And they rode like seasoned pros today. They did. But I think, doing my maths at the moment, Le Bon wins the stage, Van Baal takes seconds, but it does look as if Wilco Kelderman has possibly saved the day for Lotto NL Jumbo and will take that to White Leaders jersey. So close, so much to ride for. Two stages remaining of this great, great race. Brian. Today had just about everything for a cycle fan except sunshine. I had sunshine at the start, but <laughs> yeah, if, if you're watching that race, it's uh, you know what uh, a magnificent race that was. You can just see, uh, courtesy of the race radio, that they know from said that you have got their stage when they tried with the mark the other day, it wasn't to be, he got second, but uh, this man with the help nonetheless than uh, Dylan Van Baal won the stage so the 24 year old Frenchman takes probably the biggest one of his career back at the net <laughs> I think he's rather pleased with that well he used, the corners, he used the corners he to his advantage and uh, you know if both of them deserve to win uh, so it was a great effort by both of them not using too much energy by sprinting for the, uh, the bonuses Johan Le Bon finishes same time as Dinan Van Baal. That might be a factor. Uh, Magnus Scott Nielsen and Kelderman significantly nine seconds down. Then came Greifel, who was so brave today. Friedle Benut, Gilbert, 27 seconds he shifted today. Likewise, Lars Bohm. They won't like that. Um, not at all. Um, big losers so far are uh, BMC. The did put a lot in the chase, but it never never was to be. And you think uh, when they started on the attack, when we come onto this circuit with uh, Gilbert and Van Avermaet, it was going to be a good day for them. But uh, luckily enough, Kelderman decided to cooperate with uh, Gripe on Wellens and saved the day for Lotto NL Jumbo. So he'll be the new leader of the race as a rider in yellow. But another good result for Magnus Court Nielsen uh, for uh, Orica Green Edge. But that man set up this day absolutely perfectly for uh, Tim Wellens because Tim Wellens number one in his back going for the overall victory yet again put time into these riders uh, especially the riders from BMC so looking good and a great effort from uh, Lotto Sudal today well a lot of you enjoyed today uh, Michael Hutchinson in on Twitter he's a great time trialist himself as I'm sure you know Dr Hutch and he's uh, it was his kind of day I guess out there and just setting your tempo, sticking with it and delivering, that's what the breakaway did. Yeah, the guys, it's the guys, the riders that do the racing, you know, it's, it's, it's easy for us to commentate in the pictures, but uh, what a magnificent day, uh, held on by the skin of their teeth. Kelderman leads one second only from Dylan Van Baal, Johan Le Bon, eight seconds adrift, Van End Enden, Velens, Boom, Van Avermaet, Kinziato, Gilbert with 29 to make up, two stages to go. Terrific racing here at the Enneco. Tease it up nicely for the next couple of days. It, it indeed does, um, but uh, Tim Wellens, uh, a big winner today. Kelderman came through in the end, saved the day, but it was touch and go for uh, Van Baal, but Kelderman 
decided to help and to help he did in saving the day for uh, the uh, Lotto NL Yumbo team. So no pressure of the leader's jersey on Dylan Van Baal. Could he do it again tomorrow? I don't think he would want to. I think that was a hard day. And maybe, uh, you know, he went for it and, you know, he came up uh, just a, a one second uh, one second off it. But a brave effort in the end. There's a lot to come from this young man. Very much so. Brian's looking for a signature. Uh, 208.6 kilometres tomorrow to Hufalise. Ten Pave and Berg sections to be dealt with. Liège, Baston Liège, and of course, uh, Flanders for the final.